can't keep on having drivers who are going to drive us into a ditch. We've got to have somebody who has a clear sense of direction about where we need to take the country. Now, this morning, Senator McCain gave a speech in which his big solution to this worldwide economic crisis was to blame me for it. Okay. Welcome back to Hardball. The U.S. financial system has just come through one of the most tumultuous weeks in generations. And a lot of people are probably still scratching their heads and saying, what happened? Joining us now, CNBC's Aaron Burnett. And, oh, Jim Cramer is there. There he is. Mad Money himself <laughs> is there. All right. Well, I, I'm going to ask one question that I can go get a cup of coffee. I mean, the two of you just can, can continue. <laughs> Off of what Barack Obama said, yes. uh, who is to blame? Or, or why are people blaming everybody rather than coming up with a rapid-fire solution? Maybe they are doing that. Well, I know Jim it has interesting ideas on who to blame, too. I think the short answer to that is not short sellers, which some people would say today, but a uh, little bit of everybody is the honest-to-God truth. And I think it comes comes down to a human thing called greed and it comes down to some very lax or non-existent regulation in the areas we might have needed it most. So I don't know what Jim would say to this, Mike, but it seems like what we needed was better, smarter regulation, not necessarily more regulation. But that's a big part of the problem. Jimmy, what do you say? Well, we didn't enforce regulations. We adopted a laissez-faire attitude mm -hmm. and felt that the market could never be wrong. It was an ideological and ignorance combination that has made it so that we've paid out $900 billion so far for whatever that hasn't worked. And maybe we'll spend another $500 billion and get it right. So let, let me ask the both of you, and start with you, Kramer, mm -hmm. uh, a question that doesn't come from, you know, any Wall Street wizards. And all of this is beyond me, except for this one question that I'm going to ask you. Who is going to be paying for this? Is it going to be my kids and my grandchildren? Who's going to be paying for the cost no, I, of this? Actually, this is the first one that you won't have to worry about. All the other seizures and everything else are, are, are probably never going to make us money and cost us. Here, if we are smart about it, if you get the right guy in, we'll buy these mortgages maybe 20 cents on the dollar. We can hold them for 18 months, two years. Hardworking people do not default after they've been in their homes for three years. That tends to be the, the uh, period that we, these people are sitting on their mortgages. This one won't cost us anything. This is the first one that Bernanke and Paulson have come up with that is not a disgrace. Well, it depends, too, I think, to Jim's point. It depends what price the government is going to be able to pay. They're going to use taxpayer money, so there's a bill up front. And then, Jim, I hear what you're saying. You're saying it all depends on what price they get it, then maybe we can make if money for the taxpayer. If they put me in charge of it, I'll be, able to, I'll be able to get a couple hundred bill out of the trade. Right. I'm not kidding. It I've been right on this thing. I'm, like, fed up. But yeah. if they get, let me do the buy-in, of which I used to trade billions of bonds, I, at least I can give you a floor. Yes, yeah, so the, the question is, what's the price going to be? Okay, so I explain this to me and mm -hmm. to the people out there watching in, in English so that we can understand it, mm -hmm. okay? The, the subprime mortgage crisis that, that causes this collapse or near total collapse, how does it work? It used to be George Bailey, you'd go to the bank, Jimmy Stewart would be behind the counter, you'd get a mortgage, you'd pay mm -hmm. the mortgage every month, and he would own the mortgage. But that no longer happens, correct? What right. happens to the so, mortgage? So let's play a game here, Jim. Let's say Mike is trying to get a mortgage, and I am, let's say, a Wachovia guy, and you're an investor, all right, Jim? Right. You got it? Okay, so Mike, you come to me and say, I want a loan, $200,000, I want to buy a house. Yep. I say, all right, you know, I'll give you a loan. I'll give you a loan at 5%. Uh, and then what I do is I give you the loan and I immediately go and take that loan and I sell it to Jim. And my ability to do that frees up my money. I'm then not, if you don't pay your loan, Jim's sitting on the risk of you not paying the loan in my view. So then I can go lend to more people and create more mortgages and then I keep selling them to Jim. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's a simple way it worked. So, so Jim, when you got my mortgage from Aaron, do you hold it, or do you continue to sell pieces I of it to other people? I try to sell it, too, because I presume that you had no discipline, probably didn't do any work. Maybe it was a no-documented no. loan. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want is the piece of paper you give me. So right, because, I, I would do everything I can yeah. to try to get it very quickly over to Dresden. Exactly, because I'm thinking, I'm saying, hey, look, if I'm not, why do I need to even verify what your income is? My, <clears throat> I know I can sell it to Jim. Okay. But remember, Bernanke and, and Greenspan really <coughs> push this stuff. They love these tease loans. Now, these mm -hmm. guys, I don't know what ever happened to Bernanke. He's a Fed chair, but I, he was really responsible for a lot of what I regard as being the, the notion that we should put yeah. octane in the system. He's a great Princeton professor. The Tigers are going to have a dynamite season. It's not too late to be on hey, the pom-pom you know side okay, of the, ahead, the sideline. Uh, 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 all right. So, look, How about let's the guy stick with the I'm talking to George Bailey. That's you. Right. You're from Wachovia. You're heavily regulated by the federal government because you're a bank. Right. Is Jim regulated? No, Jim is not regulated. Jim, Jim can do whatever he wants. 
Pretty this, much, Jim. It's a great world. I'm Potter. So is, right. this, is this the crux of the issue here? The fact that you have my mortgage and are selling my mortgage, Jimmy, and you're not regulated while Aaron is regulated? There's about 10 or organizations and, and entities that regulate mortgages, and all of them decided the other guy would do it, and there right. really was no discipline to the system, and you could also blame the people who <coughs> took on too much debt. But if the government says <laughs> it's an ownership society, don't you want to be part of it even if you don't have any money? Okay, yeah, I do. I, I want to I wanna read this other letter to the editor from the New York Times today mm -hmm. to both of you. And this is from Nathan Kotke from St. Paul. Hi, Nathan. How's it going? We're reading your letter. And it's addressed, instead of the New York Times, it's addressed to Dear Mr. Bernanke and Mr. Paulson, My student loans are too big and it is hurting the economy. Can I have a bailout, please? I need $92,000. Thanks. What do you tell people like Nathan Kotke, who are, seem to be, at some extent, on the hook for this big bailout, and they can't pay their own bills? Jim, go. I, I would tell him that, Nathan, I'm sorry, but I want to avoid Great Depression too. and there's going to be some casualties. You're not going to be able to, to get as good a deal as you'd like, but Great Depression too must be taken off the table. Okay, wait, but that's Jim speaking. I'm, I, who am I now, Jim? I'm, I'm Washington. Well, I say, I, come on, bring me your Reed. poor, tired, huddled masses. I, I got a list here, Jim. The auto, autos are sitting there waiting for $25 billion. <clears throat> Before oh, you get to they autos. they got to get that. Uh, is, those are key states. Well, before you get right. to autos Why not in, give Ohio, it to the students? in Ohio and Michigan, before you even get to the students, I mean, what about paying the people in Iraq and Afghanistan? What about we, we gave them 500 bill. I think we keep 500 bill over here, see if we do a little better job than they did with the, the Iraqis. Where is this money coming from? Yeah. You know, this is a huge point, Mike, and Jim, Jim's been talking about this today, too. But the reality of it is, is we don't have the money right now. And even if Jim is right, and his analysis on this has been spot on, he's been calling for a, a bailout like this for a while. Even if we make money down the line, right now, money has to be put up. And we've put up, and some would argue, as Jim said, could be tr one, one and a half trillion dollars when we're billion. done. Okay, so let's say when we're done, one and a half trillion. That money is being borrowed. That money is coming from somewhere. We're going to have to print that money. And down the line, that creates an inflation and it creates an economy that will not be able to grow as, a, as quickly as a strong economy. The alternative though, Mike, you heard what Christopher Dodd said he heard in that room. Yeah. The alternative was economic Armageddon. It's a tough choice. It's a Hobson's choice. Her Herbert Hoover was worried about the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there are a lot of people now doing revisionist history, Mike. I'm hearing guys saying, you know, Hoover did the right thing. I have whole people in my family who say that that was the worst thing that ever happened. I'm not going to reopen whether Hoover was good or not. Oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. And thanks, both of you, for depressing me about the future.